consolation comes in two forms. There is forgetfulness for the few, diversion for the many. And yet, the horror lurks where it has been lodged, in the darkest recesses of the mind, preying on moments unsuspect. And only this master weaver of incantations can dispel the danger, if only for a moment. Oh yes, there have been diversions, the Second World War, the starvation, the civil war, the betrayal, and the slaughter. Marriage, that first night of sweet, sweet pain, and oh yes, the second uprooting, that long boat trip to Australia, not so painful after the first uprooting. After that, you are rootless and witless, able to float wherever the merciless breath of fate blows you. And you don't speak. You do not utter the name of the evil that is buried within you, because you have seen you have seen and there is no salve, no ointment, no cure for a wound that cuts you to the quick of your soul. There is nothing after that, just unraveling stitches of time, of memory, of despair. Yes, my grandson brought me the Greek paper. Hordes, hordes, and more hordes. Hordes about a plaque being unveiled commemorating the yes said, the genocide. Eh, our name and memory to be erased. That's what they wanted. That's why we were muted. They know it happened. The people in South Australia have written it in stone. For us, the silent ones, for humanity, for all time. And that man, that man standing next to the plaque, proudly, oh yes, I could see it in his eyes, no matter how grainy the photograph, he knew, he had not seen, but somehow he had felt. Yes, I see him again, dressed in the clothes of our ancestors, assuming our form in order to carry our burden. He speaks, he tells them that he will do all he can to share this burden with us, that he will achieve recognition of the Genoctonia, and we believe him, for our consolation, has assumed the form of a man who walks among us, speaking the words that we cannot. How can this man be filled with this passion? Why does our horror matter so much to him? How can our silence possibly speak to him? Our blackness color his perception. He cannot bring back our dead. He cannot erase the misery from my heart. He cannot take me, one of the last exiles, home. But he can give me a voice, my own voice, to keep the black at bay, to reconcile with the blood, with the brutality, with. No one can tell me it did not happen. I saw, and he knows. On that day, April 30th, 2009, that man spoke. He stood proud and spoke of our pain, of our lost. He spoke of our genocide. Here is fulfillment. Here is a voice that will never be silenced again, for it is the voice of all of us, steeped in our parents' blood. He wrote our soul in stone on the pages of books, 
giving meaning and purpose to the silence and to our suffering. Was it God that had given him these words to this man? Oh yes, so much like Ctenidis, our nightingale in the dark times. On the 19th of May, 2009, I watched him, Mr. Michael Atkinson, the man who brought recognition to the plight of our people as in the States and the center of Thessaloniki. Thousands of people had come to hear him, the old in silence, the young in the fervor that is born on the backs of suffering and spoken of. Atkinson looks up from the podium and into the crowd before him, his eyes glistening with the pain of thousands he had never known. Then he spoke in my voice, in the voice of all the mute. Ladies and gentlemen, Enan Pulin, Mavron Pulin, Mavron Amon Tim Niktan. Olonictis, Triyirizen, Oloyera Sokastra, Sakros, Sakastro Tia, Timavro Trabezuntus, Puesh, Tarizos Sonialon, Ketin Korfin Atsastra, Pishen Theka Kastropotas, Kiula Halkothemena, Ka apexis sa kastropotas, o mia ke potamia, do esnan ke elina, yefira siderenia. There are many heroes we can be proud of and call Pondi. Rare are those who have heard the whispers of God. Rare still are those who, with the power of their words, can bring forth the dawn and eternity. <laughs>